Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, let's do this. Okay. Hello, welcome to a Gama Sutra interview uh, today. It's a bit of a special one. I'm a bit excited for this. Uh, so uh, we've got Chris Graff with us, uh, Gama Sutra editor in chief. Uh, Hello. And we've also got uh, Min Lee, who you might know uh, as Gooseman, uh, who created the original Counter Strike, um, I, which is yeah. sort of exciting, really. So, uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing alright. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. Now, is, is it is it Goose Man or is it Gooseman? Um, actually, I don't really mind either one. <laughs> Goose Man. Okay. I, I usually just I usually just call my like usually when people refer to me, they just say Goose Man. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a weird. People always ask me where I got that nickname, so it's uh, it actually comes from a cartoon character from a long time ago, like 1980s or something, 1990s. It was a cartoon I used to watch a lot called Galaxy Rangers. I don't think anyone knows about that one unless you're my age. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. Let me know when you talk about He-Man stuff. Oh yeah, I watch He-Man too as well, but uh, I prefer <laughs> Galaxy Rangers. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so that's that's me. Uh, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. No frobs. Um So yeah, for everybody watching, the general idea is that we're going to play some uh, Counter Strike uh, Global Offensive and uh, and talk about Counter Strike uh, in general, really, and and kind of you know uh, first person shooters as well. Uh, so what we will try and do here is find a server. This is the bit now where we wait forever to join a <laughs> server, and we never actually join a server. And uh, this is really boring. Well, we can we, we, we can ask uh, we can ask uh, Min a question. Real yeah, quick go while for it. We're waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so just just for background uh, for a developer audience, uh, you know, could you just give a brief outline uh, of your work on Counter Strike? Uh, mm -hmm. Why you left Valve? Uh, what sure, yeah. you've been up to since? Yeah, so uh, actually, I I guess I invented Counter Strike back in 1999. Uh, I was in university uh, studying to be a, studying for my bachelor's in computer science. Uh, so I released the first version in about I guess 2000, and I think Valve uh, approached me in about 2001. Uh, they were really impressed with it, and they actually contacted me to work together with them on to make Counter Strike more uh, polished. Because uh, at the time it was just a mod for Half Life, and it was pretty rough around the edges, and it had a lot of uh, bugs and a lot of uh, it wasn't really a professional game. I mean, it, it didn't look very you know professional. So uh, so, anyways, I, I I joined Valve actually in 2001 uh, as soon as they contacted me, and uh, I guess uh, I was working with Valve for about five years. And I left recently. Well, not recently, actually. God, it's been ages. But I, <laughs> I, I, I left. Uh, Time I left goes the, by so fast. It, it does. I know. It's you know. It's crazy. Um, anyways, I left in around at the end of 2006, and uh, I started a new game called Tactical Intervention. And I guess a lot of people wonder why I left Valve because you know everyone wants to work at Valve. But uh, I think at the time it was just they were kind of uh, at a stage where there wasn't a lot of um, uh, push towards a new Counter Strike game. I, I think at the time they were uh, working on TF2, and uh, I, I kind of wanted, I kind of felt that I wanted to uh, focus more on a, on a game that was so similar to Counter Strike. And um, so, anyways, I, I left Valve. Uh, for for those reasons, because uh, I just felt like there wasn't really much. Um, I, I guess there wasn't much direction in terms of uh, doing a new Counter Strike project um, that was kind of uh, that would take uh, the con that would take the existing CS formula and kind of expand on it. So um, so yeah, I left around 2006 and I started a new game <laughs> called Tactical Intervention that was. Uh, using the source engine as well, and I worked on that for about three or four years on my own with a bunch of uh, uh, um, like just local help that I managed to. Um, so, sorry to jump in really quick. Do we just need to hit the accept button and then we can? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Sorry, um, I, was getting, I was getting a bit long-winded there. So, uh, you know, anyways, uh, eight years on, uh, I finally released TI about uh, four four, uh, four months ago, I guess. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty uh, pretty. Uh, uh, unfortunate turn of events with how how TI development went, but you know I mean what, we can get into that later. But uh, I, I guess for now, let's uh, we can, I probably should play some CS:GO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh, counter is just oh, it's annoying. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean it's a long story. I mean it's a long story, and I mean I think we should probably get into that uh, afterwards because um, 
it'll probably take a couple, you know, probably a good 20 minutes to explain exactly what happened. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's it's been a pretty uh, long time since I started GI, and uh, uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Should we jump into uh, the game now? I guess. Yeah. Get... So, so when the are you on the are you on the lobby screen at the moment? Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm at the inventory. I'm at. Uh, did I get kicked off? Oh wait, a match was found for you, but Guzman failed to accept it. Oh, I'm sorry. I failed to accept it because I oh, was. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, can you can you uh, invite me again? Oh yeah. You're not in. Okay. Hang on then. Yeah, uh, I think it just kicked me off. Oh, is it kicked you out? Okay, hang on. I, back in. I, I uh, did the same thing um, yesterday when we were uh, playing some practice rounds. I just didn't yeah. click the big green button. Uh, I was yeah, going, Chris, actually, there's a big um, green button there. Like, How can you not see it? <laughs> are, you, are you in the lobby? Uh, yeah, here I am. Okay, Excellent. I see you guys. Right, and so when, are... when big green button appears, let's all hit big green button. And then, we, okay. there we go, oh, big green is. button. Go, okay, go, okay. Go. <laughs> so we're gonna be playing uh, with uh, I guess five other guys. Was it yeah. three on three oh, or five? No, two it? people aren't accepting now. <laughs> what is going on? Oh no, there's one person. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let, let's see how this goes. This, this might get ugly, but you know. Just... <laughs> oh, oh, oh I, I'm here. It's going to get ugly. Well, yeah, me too. I haven't played in years, you know. I mean, I, I played the, uh, I played my other game, Ti, so um, it's a bit different than this. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think ex explain, explain um, how you kind of evolved the idea of Counter Strike for tactical intervention. Um, it, was, it wasn't terribly hard. I just put, uh, I took Counter Strike as a base, and I just sort of said, oh, what are the things that I wanted to add that I didn't get a chance to add uh, when I was working on CS and. Uh, there was just a few. Uh, there was some uh, features such as like adding dogs, and uh, I think vehicles was the, one of the biggest things that I wanted to add. And, uh, anyways, yeah, the dogs, the vehicles, and uh, like having uh, like hostages that were more uh, interactive and you know kind of took part in the action gameplay a bit more. Uh, so those those things uh, were some of the things that I, I wanted to work on. Ti. Now I've so, heard some. Um some game developers, I, it might have been on Twitter just recently, and they uh, they referred to level design as kind of a lost art, and uh, I just died. And uh, some of them were saying that um, level design is kind of taken for granted as a skill in game development. Is that something that you've that you've noticed, or can you relate to that at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think di different games focus on different level design. I, th I think with TI, I, I was actually trying to work uh, a different style of level de design initially, and I don't think it really worked out that well. I think most of the players prefer uh, prefer the Counter Strike style of level design. Um, well, I what mean, would you I'm, describe as the Counter Strike style versus the, the uh, well, Counter Strike design of level design uh, would be more geared towards. Well, if you're talking about bomb maps, it's very uh, it's it has a very um, well, it's like bilinear, as in it has like uh, very set paths, but it doesn't have. I, I think in general, it doesn't have more than two. Different routes to to the bomb route. I mean, some some maps have three, but I mean, in general, it tries not to be too lab like too much like a labyrinth, like too too uh, too confusing for the player. But it, it has to have at least two uh, two different routes to uh, to each of the bomb sites, and also it has to be very well connected. Like like you can also like uh, uh, re rejoin uh, one of the other routes. Uh, like there's also like detours and that kind of thing. It's kind of hard to, uh, for me to describe verbally, but uh, I guess. Uh, I guess to summarize, I think the Counter Strike uh, design is very—it uh, flows very well. And um, actually, my teammates screaming at me. I better—I better start playing. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a block. Jesus! I didn't buy anything. Stop! Ah! Was there a okay, guy on the bomb site? Oh man! Uh, I think I'm the only one alive. I've just been big mouth here. Um, what the heck? There's a chicken with a reindeer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we all just died. Uh, I'm the last one. I'm gonna clutch this because I've been you talking. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's me. I didn't buy any guns. Jesus. All right, uh, I'm gonna buy some guns. I think our teammate's getting a bit angry with us. He doesn't <laughs> doesn't understand what's going on. Who's that? Settle down. Yeah. Okay. So I bought a. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. Anyways, uh, if you've ever played TI and you looked at the level design of TI, it's we do uh, we tried things uh, quite differently than than CS maps. Uh, 
uh, they're they're a bit tighter, a bit smaller, and they don't flow as much as uh, as a CS map. They're more kind of like uh, actually they're more kind of simplistic actually. I think. Hey, oh, he's not happy. He's not happy. Oh yeah, I know. Ah, you go, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> go, you go, go. <laughs> I don't think that he realizes he's yelling at me. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, looking, looking oh, I'll tell you what. I, uh, oh, man. I'll tell you what. I wish that we hadn't cho I wish it hadn't chosen Inferno, because Inferno, my, my PC is not liking Inferno right now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave soon because we're so shit. Um, <laughs> that would probably be my favorite outcome if that was to yeah. happen. Okay, let's do this. I've got the bomb. I've got the bomb. And that's what I got. A bomb and a Glock. <laughs> I'm not buying anything. I'm so poor now. And I'm like, yeah, me too. Alright, alright, let's go. Let's go A. I'm gonna go A, guys. Okay. Wow, what? why is everybody so angry on this game? It's just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's something I wanted to ask you about, actually. Like, with regards to, like, sort of Counter-Strike communities. I mean, I've actually felt, like, in general, that whenever I've kind of been part of a Counter-Strike community, I've always felt like it's a bit, sort of, it's nicer than, than other Whoa! online communities. Oh, yeah, yeah, I played Call of Duty, and that's just, because uh, it's just a different age group, you know. I, I think the Call of Duty players are almost, on average, 14-year-olds. Oh, he's at A! There's somebody at A! Help me out, please. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I got your back. <laughs> uh, I the, I Come on, Chris. Wow, that guy's got. He killed me with a P250? Jesus. <laughs> Bear? Oh, I'm not gonna I pick got... up that bomb. Who kills? I'm the only one with one assist. Oh my lord. Uh. When you when you play when you play like this, is there anything that you see that you think, oh hey, I wish that I'd thought about including that sort of thing in the original Counter Strike? <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd I included cheats. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you know, CS:GO hasn't really changed too much uh, in terms of the gameplay. I think it's like I, I find myself uh, not really doing anything differently than what I did before when I when I was playing five years ago, but. I mean, obviously I'm rusty, but other than that, it's really just, I, I play the same, I just, you know, there's nothing really, I'm changing yeah. the way I'm playing. And I think that's 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 fine for, for most of the players who play this CSGO, because, I you know, I imagine a lot of people who play CSGO, I imagine that the majority of them have not played the old CS, so, you know, for them it's kind of a new experience, it's novel, it's very, <clears throat> I would imagine it's very, you know, it's very unique for them. Yeah. But I think for, uh, for a guy like me, I'm kind of an old school. I've been playing FPSs for 12 years now, and uh, you know, I mean, like, I hate to knock anything, but like for me, it's kind of I I, I wanted to try something different, and I, I wanted to do something different with TI. So, I mean, that's that's what my objective is when I made TI. Just uh, just explore some different game mechanics, different game modes. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think we, we we kind of succeeded with some of the, some of the elements of TI, like our, the vehicle modes worked out well, but. Uh, I mean, some of the other stuff that we tried was kind of, it didn't really pan out so well at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I think it's really interesting that, like, sort of, you know, the, it's basically the same map. I know there's new maps as well, but it's basically the same maps in, like, every iteration of Counter-Strike. And there's still what, like, the majority of people are still playing Dust 2. Yeah, crazy. yeah, I think it just, it's just one of those things where the gameplay is just, yeah, it just flows so well, and I think that's what, that's the key for, for these types of games. People don't really care about the maps too much, they're just, they'd rather just, uh, I think they just play the game just for the, for the gameplay and the flow of it. Yeah. You, you, you brought up, uh, you, you brought up the term flow a few times, can you, Kind of explain what you mean by that a little bit. It's kind of a vague, ambiguous thing, or uh, is it something that's feel? Yeah. Well, I mean, when I refer to flow, I refer to the way the maps have. They don't have any dead ends. You know, they're always kind of like there's all you. You can always get to one point of the map from another point without having to backtrack too much. So they, they, you know, so that's what I mean when I say flow. It, it's it just has a lot of connecting routes. <clears throat> so you know, if you if you take a look at DA dust, D dust, for example, it's like you can get to another route from, like, if you're on one route and you want to reach connect with your teammates that are on another route, you don't have to backtrack. You can actually just go go ahead and just, uh, you know, connect 
up with it later on because there's always kind of like bridges between the two routes. So uh, I guess in that sense, uh, the flow of, of the maps for Counter Strike, they have um, they always in encourage the players to never have to backtrack. Yeah. But it's basically, just don't don't have any dead ends. That's it's a pretty simple uh, simple yeah. rule in maps. <laughs> this gentleman just. Uh... Shot a chicken and exploded yeah. into a feather. I just noticed that the chickens have, like you said, the chickens have got antlers on. Bring your antlers. Okay, that's 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 really cool. That's, that's, uh -huh. I felt I felt bad for the chicken. It was uh, I, I, I think there's a little empathy um, narrative going on. Oh, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, like the first uh, chicken like introduced in uh, CS Italy, and now they're just kind of everywhere. Um. Oh wow, I just picked up the nice P90. Yo, god, the camo on this thing is ugly! It's like... <laughs> it's like some graffiti crap. Oh god. Anyways, yeah, I uh, noticed interestingly, like, I had no... I, I don't know why I'd not noticed this before, but like, when you pick up somebody else's gun or somebody else's flash or whatever, it it, it tells you whose it is. So like, yeah. this gun is chemicals. It's yeah, you know, and I think that's kind of weird. I mean, the games can become kind of like a meta game, and you know, I mean like... Personally, I don't really care about it too much, uh, but I think a lot of the people who play Counter Strike, they're, they've kind of played it for the whole meta game, you know, the whole collecting of guns and that kind of thing. You know, they're not, they don't, I don't think they really enjoy the game too much. I'm not sure if they do, but I, I think a part of it is just the whole collecting thing, kind of like Pokemon. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange. It's like it's because the thing is as well. I feel like Counter Strike from from the very beginning, and even sort of as, as it evolved as well, it always stayed sort of pure, and it was always you know, it, it never had like a place you could go and check your stats and all that kind of stuff. It was just literally you you played, and if you wanted to keep stats, you had to do it on some club web, clan website you'd made. And now oh, right. you go on it, and it's just there's specs everywhere, all over the it's, screen, it's, and crap. I just realized that it's it's really really stat heavy, and I think I mean I think that's cool though because I think if we had this back in the day, I think uh, I would have used this myself because mm -hmm. when I was a when I was a hardcore CS player, I, I used to love seeing how I, I was doing over the course of like weeks and seeing how my my accuracy was improving or or not improving. So I think this is something that. Uh, a lot of players really enjoy it. I mentioned this in, in work earlier today uh, after playing um, CSGO last night with Mike and his buddy. Um, there's there's something nice about just that old schoolish simplicity of uh, games like even Counter-Strike Go. Um, right now it just seems like there's so many features and you, you know things like uh, yeah, kill streaks and and perks and things like that, they can be fun, but it seems that maybe shooters are, online shooters are getting to a point where there's so much supplementary stuff that the focus becomes less on the teamwork and the skill. Yeah. Um, especially and, uh, than in the past. Right. I think that's why a lot of people still enjoy CS because it's still at the fundamentally very, very team focused. And, you know, they don't add a lot of elements such as uh, kill streaks and, you know, like, uh, explosives and airstrikes because I find that that's kind of stuff it, it kind of really detracts from team play. And wow, I'm terrible. Woo! Die next to the couch. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, like in my feel, if uh, like in my opinion, I think the the whole counter, uh, the Call of Duty stuff, the, the way they added all those explosives and the air, the airstrikes, I think it was more for players who weren't really good at killing people and they wanted to add something that was kind of like. Um, kind of cheap, to be honest. <laughs> and I, I, did, I didn't really enjoy a lot of the some of the the perks in, in uh, like Call of Duty. Kind of like they had a, a like claymores and, and things like a mar martyrdom, where you can automatically drop a grenade. So I don't know that kind of stuff. It's kind of it kind of took away from the the skill based uh, stuff that I was familiar with Counter Strike. So and uh, I think it kind of caters towards people who aren't really good at shooting and. Who still want to kill hey, people, and, and I think like that's kind of why. Like, so <laughs> I am bad at this. But the so, yeah, I, just, I can't get his kill streak. I'm not good enough to get a great kill streak. So. Oh yeah, I guess that in that sense. I'm just, kill I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of stuck. Yeah. But but this like hang, hanging out and you know put, put, playing online shooters. I don't play them as much as I used to. Yeah, uh, I mean, still do on on occasion, but but it is nice, you know, hanging out with friends and goofing off and, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And it, but it's definitely for me. I mean, being twelve year veteran of FPS, it, it's really kind of it's not as uh, exciting as it used to be. I, I guess in a way. I mean, that's probably what I would say. 
do, do you think that tactical intervention has kind of, um, you know, contributed to, uh, quote, unquote, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, quote, unquote, like fixing, um, that, that feeling that you have that, uh, uh, no, I mean, I, I tried, but I don't think, you know, I, if TI is not very, uh, I wouldn't say TI succeeded in much, uh, in terms of, uh, addressing some of the, the problems that, I mean, like there, there's some stuff of, of TI that I really enjoy playing, like the, the, the vehicle map, that's definitely, uh, but I mean, the other stuff, I like the hostage mode, uh, it, it didn't really pan out as well as I would have hoped. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I think it was just kind of, um, I think, I, personally, I think we're, I, I'm running out of ways in which uh, I can come up with to uh, really push the genre. Because I think FPS have become kind of, I think it's gotten to the point where there's not much more you can add to it. You know, I think Battlefield has really pushed it as well. I mean, I mean, outside of what they're doing with Battlefield, there's there's not a whole lot more you can do to an FPS game. Right? <laughs> so, um, what what have you been? Uh, it sounds like you play Battlefield. Have you been playing Battlefield Four or talking? Uh, no, actually, I haven't played Battlefield too much. The last Battlefield I played was Battlefield Two, so. Uh, I haven't really played the, the latest one, so. But I mean, I, I kind of uh, I, I get the feeling that Battlefield is uh, Battlefield Two and Battlefield Four are pretty similar, so uh, it's it's much more of, like a large scale battle, so. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I, I think th those types of games have really pushed the the, the genre forward. Man, I'll tell you what, I really, really wish we weren't on Inferno. Wow, I know. I mean, can we get a kill yet? I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, you haven't played it in a couple of years and you play it now, and it's just like, wow, we're just playing against bots. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> insane. And I, I guess that's how, how, how the, um, you know, how CS has gone. I killed somebody! Hey! Yeah. Uh, you, I killed somebody! Ah, this is a bear. <laughs> yeah. We've each we're, managed one kill, like, so we're doing oh, pretty I well. Know, I, I think our team oh. is... Really hate us, man. This is so I think bad. they really hate us, yeah. I'm fairly certain yeah. that one guy, yeah. possibly German, is shouting at us lots. So I have the bomb. I mean, is there oh, a server for you. noobs? Or, or like casual noobs? Because I think we belong there. Actually, cause... there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This might be it. Do you think won't last forever? <laughs> what the hell is this? That's like advertising on this. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up. Alright, so who's got the bomb? Oh, I have the bomb, yeah. Chris is going to go and lose the bomb. Yeah, where do I go? Uh, I've got the bomb. You can throw the bomb if you want. Oh, you can? Press, press G and you can lob the bomb. Oh. Bomb lobbing. Oh, there oh, we go. I lobbed my gun. <laughs> <laughs> they just took my gun. Oh, damn it. I lobbed it and you took it. All right. I got the bomb. I got the bomb. <laughs> uh, Wait, I don't have the bomb. What the, who's got the bomb? Oh, I do have the bomb. Sorry. The guy outside has got the bomb. No, I've got the bomb. I've got the bomb. I'm going to go to A. I'm going to go to A. And there's okay. a chicken reindeer down there. Let's do this. Do this. Oh! Wait, maybe you guys should go first. I got the bomb. Go! Oh! oh my god! Oh, I was standing at the door! Jesus! I was executed right in my. Oh! <laughs> First soul. Oh, it's amazing. It's like. It, it, it'll, it'll record okay, but while I'm recording, my. It's good. basically because good. of this plus Inferno, I, it's oh, just, I just not please. happening at all. It's alright though, I yes, can deal with losing. I haven't played Inferno too much. I mean, I know Dust, that's about it. I, I, yeah. kinda know, I'm, I really like Siege and those, those maps, but... Um, Yo, zero, I mean... Zero, buy me P90 and drop it. So, what?! So, this guy's asking me to buy him a Dust! <laughs> <laughs> he wants a P90? I'll buy him a P90. There we I'll go. buy him. This will show him up for a while. There we go. Yeah. So, so what's next for you? What are you doing right now? Is it still tactical intervention development? Or is it other game <laughs> development? I, uh, I'm still doing some uh, uh, some um, updates to TI in terms of like just uh, new guns and uh, I mean being a free to play game you always constantly have to add new content and I think that's that's one of the things that we weren't really entirely prepared for I mean we kind of knew we had to do it but it's it's a lot of work because like you're you're almost like never you never really stop adding new content you know and you know, yeah. we always have to do it ourselves and we can't leverage the community because you know. Uh, it's just the way that our game works. We just we have to do all of the models, all of the all of the levels ourselves. Whereas you know, a game like CS:GO, you can actually you can leverage the community. Hey, somebody just call me a cockster. <laughs> Quite possibly. I managed yeah. to get a kill. It was amazing. Guys, where, where are you guys? Oh, oh! I just killed a chicken and I died. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 
It's called Chicken Karma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, oh. Wow, we are so bad. I'm surprised our, our teammates didn't rage quit it by now. They just like, so bad. Chris, you, you managed to get an assist on me. So yeah. thanks for that. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, I was hoping one of you guys would carry us or something. But... Oh. Yeah. Hey! I oh. tried to smash me. Tried to knife you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh man. The guy. I was reloading. God, they're getting more and more irritated with us. It's, it's sort of mesmerizing to listen to. <laughs> Does he so, want another ninety? Is that he wants? Here, here, happy P ninety. <laughs> just keep giving them guns. That will count. I just, I just, I just bought him a gun. And oh, that's nice. Right. <laughs> I'm so, hoping yeah, when we switch uh, over to uh, uh, to. Yeah, I is concerned. I'm just sort of doing uh, some updates for and working on new maps. How many people are working on the TI right now? Um, it's a really small team, but I think we have around. Uh, two programmers and about two, uh, I think two artists, and, as well as myself, so I, I think five guys. Are you um, talking any numbers like uh, users and things like that? Oh, uh, you mean you want to know how many users play our game? Um, yeah, yeah, how many? Uh... Yeah, about five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's not... It's, yeah, you gotta get in there while it's hot, baby. You know, you gotta get in the early adopter program. Yeah, I'm gonna get in the bottom. Get in the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We're just we're just not doing very well. I mean, I, I think uh, our CCU, like our max player count, is usually on Saturdays, and we get we get a peak of about six hundred people. And mm -hmm. yeah, that, I mean, it's it's really kind of it's not enough for us right now. So we're, we're doing what we can to to improve it, but it, it's really hard, you know. To be honest, I think the FPS genre is just so saturated right now, I mean, and I think CS:GO has really just uh, pretty much made it very difficult for. Like uh, FPS games, like to to really compete in this marketplace, because uh, CS:GO has done such a great job of just making the the experience so polished and so you know it's got like everything that you really want from an FPS game. I mean, it's just the whole the the whole uh, presentation of everything is just so polished. It's just I mean, it's just it's just really difficult for us to uh, <clears throat> to really draw a crowd away from these guys. Yeah, so, are you, are you do, do you are you um, sort of happy you went Free to play, or in retrospect, yeah. would you would you not do that again? Yeah, it's a difficult question to answer because you know, I mean, obviously, I can't really talk about that too much. But yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I think, like, truth be told, I, I I think our game would have done better if it wasn't free to play. You know, I mean, that's my opinion. I, I don't represent the opinion of people that I work with, and so you know, <clears throat> it's always very tricky to answer that question. But you know, I mean, if I was in charge, I, I don't think I would have gone that route again. You know? Yeah. You know, because I, I think it really free to play. Free to play, it only works for certain games that really allow you to, to have a lot of items and a lot of cosmetic visual upgrades. Like like League of Legends does it really. I mean, it really works well for, for League of Legends because you can see your character and you can, you know, there's a real wow, yeah, and there's a real value to buying uh, cosmetic items. Where uh, games like uh, first person shooter games, you really you're really kind of limited in like <clears throat> your can you drop me a K? Yeah, sure, okay. Wow, this guy's forcing me to buy him a gun. He wants to make... <laughs> I'm gonna buy him an MP7. I, I, I have all my voices turned off. Uh, what do you want? Can you just you guys. Somebody just asked me for a gun. I don't know who I'm it was. I'm gonna have that gun on the floor there. <laughs> oh, he wants right. it now. Oh, yeah. Does he want this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gun show. Welcome to the gun show. I got the bomb and I just bought a gun and gave it away. Uh, yeah. As I was saying, like, um, free to play games don't really, I mean, they're, they're difficult to work with an FPS game because uh, you, you're kind of, it's hard to sell character skins and that kind of stuff because people, like, you don't, you don't even see your own character, so it's not really attractive for someone to buy a character skin. Whereas in LoL, League of Legends, you know, you, it's really, it's real enticing. Yeah. Uh, and also the the whole uh, balance issue things, you know, that, that's just, you know, that's just addict. You can't really... Sell anything that will affect balance and oh no, and that's it's really hard to uh, oh, no. uh, <laughs> convince people to buy, buy stuff when when it doesn't affect their performance. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, for sure, TI we really stay away from that. We we don't want to they make the game pay to win. So I mean, and I think that might have hurt our our, our like my like financial. I think that definitely really hurt our our bottom line financially. But yeah. you know, I guess. 
the majority of players that play our game, uh, they, they, they like the fact that they don't, they don't, it's not a pay-to-win game. But unfortunately, it's not sustainable fi- uh, financially. I mean, we're losing money, you know, but to the nose. I, I'm not, I'm, I can't really say, but I mean, like, it's kind of obvious. I mean, we're not doing well financially. I mean, like, I'm sorry, I think I might have laughed at an inappropriate time. I just I just threw the threw, oh. threw the bomb and then no one picked it up. Um Yeah. So yeah. nobody's got the bomb. So oh, or, um um are you thinking about getting into uh you know what's what's next after tactical intervention, you know, say that uh you know you have the itch to move on somewhere else or yeah. Uh, uh, is is it still game development for you? I mean, yeah. I mean, I love I love games. Yeah. Damn it! I saw this game. <laughs> no, I'm uh, yeah. I mean, I, I love making games, and I love you know I enjoy the whole game industry. Uh, but you know, I mean, like it's really gone to the point where there's just so many good games out there, and it's just people are so there's so much uh, talent, and there's so much. Uh, it's very really hard to compete in this industry, or just to. Uh, to really uh, survive in this industry because uh, it's not like it's like it was ten years ago where you know there was there was kind of like a handful of developers and you can really uh, you can make a crap game and <laughs> you can sort of survive. But I mean, this day and age, you really got to bring your A game. Uh, it's just so competitive, and yeah, so I'm kind of looking towards mobile games because I, I think you know it's just uh, I think the the level of uh, polish in in a, in a mobile game is not as large as like a a, a PC game. So. Mm. And that's something that's changing. It's super so, cute. Uh, it's just it's cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, make no mistake too. I mean, mobile mobile games are uh, the market. The market's maturing, and uh, that's there it has its own special set of uh, of issues. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, I think you've got to be aware of like w- like what's out there and. I mean, it's a really saturated market for sure, and so you you, you gotta be aware that uh, you really wanna you really have to come up with something yeah, that's, that's different. different. Yeah, I think everyone's getting mad at us. Maybe we I think I think that the yeah. other people on our team are asking us to vote kick them so that they don't yeah. get penalized. <laughs> oh, it's that bad! Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're we're trying to do an interview here, fellas. <laughs> it's really yeah, angry. Um, kick, kick, should kick, there, should we just uh, quit out of here or? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I don't Dude, care about my, my, my rank. Yeah, let's, but they told me to go to, so I'm just gonna go to B. I'm just gonna do what they say. <laughs> yeah, see, the, the problem, the problem for me is that like I, 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 I do wish I'd um, oh, taken yeah. Inferno off the thing because the. Uh, the combination of me recording and being on Inferno. Inferno is a pretty choppy map in the first place, but this is... It's basically, I, I can't play. I'm fairly certain the recording will be fine, but uh, but I, at the moment, I just I can't play at all. So I'm just sort of running around and having a bit of a laugh, basically, instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyways. Uh, this is some good footage, but... This is... um, wow, that guy just get a headshot? Hmm. It's alright, the pain will be over soon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, how many rounds? Alright, it's, fir- it's first 14 to 16. Round. This is 14 rounds! Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, first to 16. Okay, well then that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you something else we were, I was going to ask you about. Um, was uh, was just m- like modding in general, so like obviously um, must be quite close to your heart given that, you know, it, it started Counter Strike in the first place, uh, but I mean, yeah. how do you feel about the way that, that modding is handled at the moment? Like, especially like with with Steam Workshop, etc. Yeah, I think it's gotten a lot a lot easier for modders to uh, uh, really get their uh, their product out there. But at the same time, it's really made it kind of a saturated. As, again, it's kind of it's hard for people to get noticed because there's just so much out there. And you know, uh, it's hard for some of the good mods to really just uh, get some exposure because of just. I I gotta take off my headphones. These guys are annoying. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, it's just. But I think the tools are like, uh, especially Unity. I mean, I've just been working with Unity, and like, uh, it's just a dream to work on Unity because it's so easy to make uh, to make a game on that thing. It's just like you can make a game in a couple months and. Uh, I think the tools haven't been any better than they were. Like, I mean, they're as good as they were, uh, if not better than they were, like four, five years ago. So, mm. so it's definitely uh, 
it's definitely gone to the point where making mods and making games in general has, has become so accessible to just uh, the uh, the average gamer who's willing to spend a bit of time to learn the tools. Yeah. Because I mean, I remember making mods on the Half Life One engine, and I remember how how difficult it was to just to get a model inside of the game. And, uh, I think uh, it made it very uh, like kind of a, a very uh, exclusive uh, skill set to be able to make make mods. But this in this day and age, I mean, anybody can make a mod. My mom can make a mod. It's just crazy. Mods for mods. Yeah, <laughs> lost. I'm lost. Well, yeah. Now it's um, you know with, with mods, obviously there's a lot of uh, talk about user generated content, and then you know places like. SOE and of course Valve with hats, uh, they're letting people, uh, you know, find the kind of success that you did, except uh, in a more, whoops, um, accessible like, way. Yeah, um, actually, it's, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. It allows people to actually make a make a living off of it, you know. So, I think it's wonderful. You know, I, I think if this was uh, around in my day and age, I would have really uh, been able to uh, make a fair bit of money and. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's really great for the for the industry as well because it really promotes growth in terms of like uh, creating new uh, talent and you know who knows I mean uh, you know, in, the, in the new future I mean I, I probably want to hire a lot of the guys out there that are making these, these models so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah and I think it's great for the industry uh, for everyone involved in the industry so um, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a, a highlight the the, the, the workshop yeah. Spe speaking of kind of like old school uh, source uh, and Valve related modders. I saw that um, uh, on your Steam profile that you had been playing some Rust. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, actually, I've been playing uh, Rust because actually the guy who uh, programs Rust, he's, he used to work with us on Tactical Intervention and he programmed a lot of our code. Uh, so he helped out a lot for a few months and uh, I'm a good friend with him. So... Uh, you know, I, I help them out with the rest uh, here and there. So yeah, we keep in touch, and, uh, and Rust has just really taken off. I, I, you know, it's just really, really uh, a lot of people are really enjoying it, and uh, it's it's amazing actually. I mean, it's really rough around the corners, but I mean, just the fact that the game is offers such a unique experience. I mean, it's a lot like Daisy. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will say, and I think that is true. It's, it's like Daisy with Minecraft, so. <clears throat> But, uh, I mean, have you played Rust yourself? Actually, have uh, a little bit. Mike and I kept on talking about getting uh, together to play it, but, um, yeah, I played it by myself, yeah. and... It's not fun by this, yourself. This, I, I, this, but, but you, you know, it doesn't sound like what I'm about to describe is very fun, but in a weird way it was. <laughs> so, you know, you, you get into the game, it's nighttime, I have a torch, I really don't know what anything, what you do. Uh, I w I'm walking around... Realize I have a rock. I see a deer. I sneak up on the deer after I realize that they run away when you, know, you can scare them off. So I sneak up on it. I bash it a few times uh, with the rock because I need to eat. Um, and I, I kill the deer. So I'm like, oh, cool. Um, and then I can't. It appeared. I could be wrong, but I couldn't do anything with it because I needed a hatchet or something. So oh, then... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of like typing into the chats, like I killed a deer. Can I get someone with a hatchet? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I tr I had turned around for maybe uh, 15 oh, seconds, and uh, somebody had stolen the deer. Somehow it was gone. I don't know what happened. Maybe it, it glitched away to a deer. Yeah, it probably has a few glitches, but yeah. Yeah, and then um, and, and then somebody uh, shot me. Uh, but uh. Just um, in that short amount of time, and that was the very first time I played. In that short amount of time, it, it really shows you just how emergent that game can be. And mm -hmm. there's going to be a whole lot of like cool stories, just like in Day Z, when people talk about um, it, you know their experiences in that game. Uh, the next time that I played it, uh, uh, it, it was a little bit better, a different experience, um, uh, working with a few other people. Um, working against bandits who are more powerful and stuff and teaming up. So, yeah, I, I've, uh, I have played a little bit, and I'm just I'm going to jump in again, and uh, I'm just yeah. looking forward to not just playing it, but also watching some of the crazy YouTube bits, like on Daisy, uh, yeah. that, you know, that show just how emergent the gameplay can get. 
Yeah, and I think that's kind of that whole sandbox thing is it's it's its own it's a, it's its own genre now because you know you got games like Minecraft and uh, Daisy. It's <clears throat> it's so open ended and emergent that it's almost like you try to give the player as little rules as possible and you know, let the player decide how the game should flow. And I think that's kind of interesting, you know. Oh, I killed two people. Yes. Nice. Let's log off. I'm gonna log off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, Daisy is really. I mean, uh, Daisy and Rust are really kind of two two games that are really, you know, is really introduced a new genre, and I think that's really interesting. Sort of amazing that we've actually managed to get five rounds here and possibly a six. I'm fairly certain yeah. it's the other two yeah. guys who have carried us. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. But this is yeah. They're getting they're getting they're getting a bit less angry with us, so I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, fair. I feel this I feel a bit bad for them. I feel like maybe I should after afterwards find them and then like buy them some kind Apologies. of Apologies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, we were doing an interview. Oh, oh wow. it's finished, it's all over. Yeah. Oh, oh god. Go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh, we could have had it there, guys. So that was an interesting game, and I think we made a lot of enemies. Um, <laughs> Rematch. Oh. Yes. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So uh, let's get off. So uh, do you guys want to do another game, or no? Maybe we should. Oh, I, I, oh we, I, can, uh, you... <laughs> we, we can. We can probably wrap wrap up the interview here for uh, the video. Oh, no, I, yeah, if there's more questions, I, don't, I mean, I'm more than, happy, more than happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's always kind of hard to ask and play. And my mind yeah, is kind of places. So. We, we, I think that we actually got some good stuff there, even though mm. we were um, uh, being horrible, intensely horrible, uh, <laughs> concentrating on that. Uh, but, but, Mike, yeah. I'll, I'll let, I'll, uh, go ahead. I'll let you wrap it up uh, with Min here, with Goose oh, Matt. Excellent. Right. So, so yeah. Um, thanks, thanks for talking to us, uh, I guess. I was... Um, that was maybe sort of embarrassing. I, the problem is people are going to be able to have seen what I was playing and seen the horrible embarrassment that was me playing Counter Strike there. Um, I, I think I, I, me and me and me and the other guy, we weren't any better, so, <laughs> so that is pretty much the same. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. And uh, I mean, if you guys have any more questions regarding, uh, you know, because I don't think I covered a lot of stuff too much. Because uh, there's always, like, like I said, there's a big lot more to talk. about. Uh, free to play and just uh, the challenges that I had working on TI. Yeah. 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 If you guys had any, if you guys wanted me to elaborate on that, uh, you know, I mean, I could. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I can even talk about it right now because we. Yeah. We well, we we might as well since we have you here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like what, so, uh, what? What? What else is there? Your experience with with free to play? It's. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, uh, it's just, well, initially, when I first uh, started TI uh, eight years ago, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't plan on it being free to play. I, I wanted it to be just kind of like a game where you just purchase it, like the, uh, Day of the Feed Source or TF2 or any of those games. So uh, the like the, the initial game design what was was centered around that, making it just basically a, a, a standalone game. Uh, except uh, when I decided to uh, work with this company in Korea uh, about five years ago. Uh, they were uh, really insistent on, on really uh, going down the free-to-play route because they thought that free-to-play was kind of like the emergent thing, and they were kind of uh, saying free-to-play would be the future in like five, or, like in the in, in the near future, that all games would be free-to-play. And uh, you know, I mean, I was kind of skeptical about that, and I, even to this day, I don't really believe that that's going to be the case. Uh, but you know, I mean, they were they were really. Uh, they were really adamant about making TI free to play games, so I just I, I had to uh, you know uh, I didn't have uh, much of a choice. I really had to um, try to redesign the game to to allow it for uh, to exist in a free to play space. So so in order to do that, we had to like rewrite a lot of the the game design. We had to uh, revamp a lot of uh, the, a lot of things had to be changed in order to accommodate free to play because you know we we had to make sure that it wasn't going to be uh, unbalanced. We had to. We, but at the same time, we had to come up with things that we can sell because if if you can't monetize your game, you know there's no point in <laughs> putting it out there. So so as I said, there was a huge challenge in making a, a realistic shooting game, a realistic FPS game, uh, in making that a, a free to play friendly because uh, th there's only so many items that you can introduce uh, that before before the game becomes too crazy, before it becomes 
like uh, unrealistic. And you, you're sort of seeing that with CSGO with the whole uh, painted skins of the guns and that kind of thing. I mean, it's definitely not realistic. It's definitely not like um, it kind of takes away from the whole. Uh, th there's no consistent uh, art style to to the guns. They're just kind of wacky and crazy. Uh, but that, that, that's kind of that's what that's the route you have to go down in order to sell your, uh, to in order to monetize your game. You have to like uh, be really creative with uh, with your items. So so that's why I feel free to play games. They really only work for games that are like uh, based in fantasy or or sci-fi or games that don't have to aren't tied down tied tied down by the uh, the rules of uh, of reality and you know um, that that they allow the the, the the designer to come up with uh, items that that don't fit in, in, in like the real world so and so it's I mean, probably probably good good for teams too that actually have uh production um you know means in place to keep that constant flow of items going yeah if, you, if yeah. you're saying that you know uh like back, back five years ago and you had a small team you're working on tactical yeah. intervention and all of a sudden somebody um jumps in and says we got to get on the free-to-play business model um, Yeah, it's kind of like yeah okay but you know, it's one thing to ask, and it's another thing to actually deliver all the stuff that that requires. Yeah, you know, and I think that's that's the like that's that was just a huge mistake uh, on our part. Uh, like as a company, the company that I work with, I mean, we just I think we just bit off more than we can chew. I mean, just I, I they don't they didn't really understand the full scope of, of making a free to play game. I mean, you have to make the game first, and not only that, but you have to constantly produce content. It's almost like making a sequel, you know, uh, and it's really never ending. Uh, Unless your game, unless your game goes out of service, you know, you like every month we have to come up with new, new items to sell, new weapons to sell, and uh, and we, we, like as I said, we can't leverage the community because uh, our game is not set up like CS:GO where we have a Steam Workshop and uh, we can actually uh, uh, you know take guns that the community has made actually because uh, there's technical uh, obstacles in order for us to set that up and we we just weren't able to overcome those obstacles and. And so we're, we're kind of stuck with just making everything ourselves. And uh, it, it's just been a real, um, it's, a bit, it's, a bit, it's been a lot of work for us. And uh, I don't think we've been able to tackle it as successfully as we would like. I mean, uh, outside of that, I mean, just uh, just the fact that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, trying to compete in the CSGO uh, uh, like realm right now, it's just, it's very difficult because right now, uh, if you look at Steam, uh, if, the, if you look at the top 10 games that are played in Steam, like the top FPS games are just Counter Strike, you know. Everything else is Dota and Rust and Daisy. So it's just like Counter Strike has just really dominated the FPS genre. And for us, I think it was just a bit. Uh, it was a bit. Uh, uh, I think we over uh, overestimated uh, or underestimated how 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 challenging it would be to compete in the uh, Counter Strike Go's uh, uh, shadow. <clears throat> do Do you have any leeway to? Um to make the game, to make tactical intervention uh, just a full paid download, and then you can just supplement it with with items, you know, when you are, yeah. are able. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean that that did come up uh, during the discussions of how 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 we want to take TI direction because uh, I'll be honest with you, right now the success of TI is you know it's just not it's not there for us and uh, the free to play model uh, you know it's just not really working as well as we would have liked on. On the on the Steam platform, so yeah, there were thoughts about you know, hey, let's just let's just you know turn around and sell this game for a set price, and then you know maybe make some DLCs. But I think uh, the the uh, the consensus was that it was just very, you know, it's it's a, it's unheard of for one thing. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a free to play game that's said, oh God, you know, this doesn't work. Let's just sell it for fifteen bucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I think it kind of makes it very difficult for us to. Uh, Justify it in terms of like the people that have already spent like a lot of money on our game, and you know for us to just turn around and sell it off for fifteen dollars, it's it's a huge kind of like uh, you know slap in the face of the people that supported us, and uh, you know I think just ethically we just uh, and me personally I just didn't feel that it was right for us to do that. I mean I think you know uh, the decision to go free to play was made, and I think it's just something that we just have to live with, and you know if it means the the failure of our game then I, so be it. But I don't think it's I don't think it was right for us to uh, to turn around and just uh, screw the people that paid a lot of money to support our game. And uh, you know, it's just I mean, I think the best thing for us to do is just to just uh, do do what we can to to uh, to um, to raise some exposure for TI and just try to uh, take it from here. But I think uh, yeah, becoming a becoming a non free to play game is just it's it's something that we just couldn't really uh, agree on. And, yeah. yeah. 
do you think you'd ever, um, if if the opportunity arose, do you think you'd ever go back to Counter Strike? If you know, if if sort of you know, if the next <laughs> yeah, Counter Strike, you know, they thought, hey, like, you know, he, he probably yeah. had some good ideas given he invented it. Do you, do you think that yeah. you'd, you'd sort of yeah. mix in there again? Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people ask me that, and, and it's something that I kind of uh, casually thought over in my head, and I've never even approached Valve about it, to be honest, and I've never really talked to them about it, and, you know, you know, they might be uh, interested in it, uh, but I haven't really thought about it too much, but uh, my personal opinion of it is, um, like, I don't really have much to... Uh, to uh, to really uh, add to the genre. I mean, I think with TI, I've kind of like tried a lot of things that I thought I really wanted to add that uh, I felt really would have improved the genre. And like, if I were to come back to work on Valve, I, I don't. To be honest, I, I probably would just say let's let's just add the stuff that I would add to TI. <laughs> and you know, they they can either you know, and I'm not sure. I, you know, it's kind of it's I, I don't know. You know. It's, it's hard. It's hard for me to answer that because right now I'm still kind of tied to TI, so it's hard for me to think about uh, about moving off of TI and moving back to CS. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, there's a part of uh, me that has entertained that thought, and uh, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, it's it's uh, stranger things have happened. You know, I'm I'm sure uh, I could probably give uh, some benefit to being on the Counter Strike uh, franchise again. So and, you know. But, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say at this point because I'm still kind of working on TI. So yeah, yeah. Video. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, so I mean, outside of that, I mean, it, it's been a real challenge for us uh, in in terms of just recruiting people to work on the game for, for one thing. Because I mean, uh, when we were uh, relocated to Korea, we thought it would be uh, you know it wouldn't be too hard to find some talent to work on us. But a lot of people there, they don't really know the source engine, so that's really that was the biggest challenge for us. And when we're working on a game that uses the source engine, we had to find people that were familiar with it. So, uh, in fact, a lot of the people that work on TI, they're not even Korean; they're actually foreigners. Like uh, one guy's from the UK, one guy's from Canada, two guys are from Germany. So actually, uh, none of them are from Korea. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But I mean, the, the company is based in Korea, and like uh, it was just hard for us to to convince people to come out to Korea and work there because. Uh, it's it's a big culture shock for a lot of people, and you know if you're not prepared for it, it's uh, it's not something that we can uh, uh, really accommodate for uh, for some of the people. So so that was yeah that was a big mistake for us to uh, to really think that oh you know we can just find some guys in Korea that can help us out, but uh, unfortunately it didn't pan out that way. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. But, I, um, I think we've been through a lot of what we were going to ask. Have you got anything else uh, on top on the top of your head, Chris? Um. <clears throat> No, uh, excuse me. Uh, other than, uh, it, I guess uh, you know, going forward, it sounds like obviously went over some really big challenges uh, that mm. you know that really aren't you know uh, aren't aren't unique <laughs> you know yeah. necessarily uh, to you and your team. Um, yeah. So we we kind of we kind of talked about like really, we kind of wrap up on this about like you know like. What's next? Uh, you, you know, for you, you mentioned you know a little bit of interest in mobile. You talked a little bit about Unity development. Um, next step for uh, you and or uh, you and your team. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, after TI, uh, you know, I'll be honest, we haven't made any money. I mean, like, I think we lost a lot more money than we 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 put in here. So uh, it won't be easy for us to go back and make a PC game because P making a PC game involves a great deal of. Uh, Finances and I, I think me personally, I think I'd have to really look into just making a small game that's really, uh, really fast to 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 turn around, and you know it's just very cheap to, to produce, and that's why mobile is is something that I'm kind of looking at and thinking, oh okay, this is something that can uh, that I can really uh, take a bite out of because as I said, I, I can't afford to make another game that requires like a year, to, like two years of time, and and. Um, yeah, and so yeah, definitely mobile is something that really attracts me because I, I feel that there's a lot of games on the mobile that really caters to like 12 year old kids. And uh, you know, I play some mobile games when I'm just I have a lot of free time. Sometimes I'll just be waiting on the bus and I play games. And there's not very many games on the iTunes store that I, that really that really kind of cater to my my personal tastes. Like I, I like games that are a bit more like uh, more mature in in their content. You know, because if you look at the top 10 on iTunes, there it's just a bunch of kiddie games, man. It's just uh, it's just kind of it's just really hard for me to find a game that kind of uh, appeals to my my taste so 
maybe that's just the case that you know everybody that plays mobile games are kids and you know but i think if i were if if someone just made a really uh, some some people made some more mature games i think there could be a, a big bigger audience for them because you know i mean i'll just download the kitty games because there's nothing else to download right you know it doesn't mean i like them but so maybe if someone out there made a made a more mature game it could do pretty well you know you know, I'm not talking about making like a porn or something. I'm just, I'm just saying games that have a more mature like art style. You know, because when when you look at the art style in a lot of the iTunes games, they're just, oh god, it's all just cartoon kitty, just, uh, you know, stuff that I might have liked when I was 12. But I mean, in the, like I'm I'm like 37 years old. I kind of, I I, I like games kind of like in, like Infinity Blade. You know, that's a it's a mature title. It's it's got a very mature art style. It's it's very you know professional. Uh, games like that. Games like uh, just. I don't know. It's just if someone made a like a um, like a DayZ game kind of on the mobile, that, I mean, with that kind of art style and that kind of realistic setting, I think that would I think that would do really well. I mean, I, I I'd be interested in playing that. Yeah, I, so, I think uh, one of the problems, isn't it, is that like free to play, uh, sorry, not free to play, like first person shooters or first person anything really doesn't oh, yeah, massively yeah, translate yeah. well to controls. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you on that. I have um, I've played a few FPS games on the mobile, and they just ugh, you know, I played Counter Strike. Yeah, I played Counter Strike um, uh, sort of rip offs, and somebody yeah. brought, when I was at GDC last time, someone brought one over and was like, "Oh, check out my game! Check out my game!" And it was literally <laughs> Counter Strike on a touchscreen, and it was awful. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just it just doesn't work. I mean, they expect you to move and and aim and, and switch your guns, and your fingers are all over the screen. That's just oh man, you don't, you can't even enjoy the graphics, man. You're just like you're just everywhere. So yeah, definitely, if you're gonna make a mobile game, you really have to be aware of the limitations. And uh, but I still think you can still make a pretty decent game on there with, with 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 even though they have those limitations, you know. I mean, I played like oh for example like the the, the racing game Need for Speed and and those types of games. Uh, the one on the mobile game, I I enjoyed the heck out of that. I really enjoyed it, you know. So they, they, the the way that they did the controls and just the graphics. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I thought that they did a bang up job on that. So I think it can be done for sure. If as long as you maybe pay maybe, maybe Unreal Engine powered, free to play, match three puzzler. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's your yeah. name, Goose Man. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, well, thanks but, a lot for uh, for taking time yeah. to, to talk with us. Really appreciate it. That was fun. Yeah, uh, well, well, playing you know, some thanks. Counter Strike. Yeah. I don't know if it's fun. I mean, I think we made a lot of enemies there. <laughs> I, yeah, but uh, it was, it was, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for having me. You know, it's always a pleasure for me to get in touch with the industry. So uh, I'm glad I can contribute in that way. So, uh, you know, I'm actually thinking about doing a post mortem uh, about TI. Uh, do, you, do you think that'd be a good idea to put it on Gamma yes. Sutra? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we should want definitely that. do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love to because, you know, there's so much shit that I had to go through that I think. Uh, uh, a lot of people, if they if they kind of uh, knew about it beforehand, it, it might help them, you know, for sure. Definitely, yeah. We'll definitely but yeah. Follow up. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll keep in touch, guys, and I'll let you know uh, whenever I uh, want to do, uh, decide to do a post mortem. Um, great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thanks again. Have a good day, guys. All right. Bye.